I'd like to start, though, with a very quick introduction to John and I. John Watson is Skibbolder's Director of Oracle Database Services. John oversees our Oracle Remote DBA, our Oracle Support Services, and Oracle Training Businesses. John is an Oracle Certified Master and holds uh, roughly eight Oracle certifications, including the 11G Performance Tuning Expert Certification. And John has authored or co-authored three of the Oracle Press 11G exam guides. Hopefully you've had a chance to read some of those. As for me, I don't do too much, but seriously, I have over 30 years of experience in information technology as a developer and a DBA, and consider myself fairly good at Oracle DBA tasks, mostly tuning. Now over to John for today's lesson. Welcome, John. Well, well thank you very much for that um, somewhat glowing introduction, Dave. Now, what I want to talk about uh, this evening, or lunchtime for most of you, is what we call equivalent sequels. Now, an equivalent sequel, the idea is that many different statements with uh, wildly different syntax, totally different structures, will often give the same results. And that's what we call an equivalent sequel. However, under the, count, under the covers, the way Oracle actually executes equivalent sequels may be very different, very different execution plans. So equivalent sequels, they may be equal, but perhaps not as equal as one might think. A lot of this is to do with query transformations, and the cost-based optimizer should be capable of doing any appropriate transformation. So no matter what SQL you throw at it, it should rewrite it into the most efficient form. But uh, as Dave and I have found over the years, there are many cases where it can't actually do that. Um, either it can't because of technical limitations, or perhaps because of lack of information, incorrect missing statistics, and maybe many reasons why the rewrites do not occur. And what I'm trying to show in this hour is how you can, to a certain extent, take control. And the way you write your SQL, you can design equivalent SQLs that may well help the optimizer and give much better results, much better performance for an identical result. Now, to give you a very simple idea of how this sort of thing might work, you know, perhaps the most simple equivalent SQL we can have. I'm working at the moment just on the Scott schema. So if I were to select star, well, let me just set auto trace on, enable the auto trace facility. If I were to select star from emp e dept d, where e dot depth now equals d dot depth now. All I'm doing, as you can see, is just joining the tables. And if we look at the results of that, let me stretch that window out, format things slightly better. Right. So what we have there is a simple join of M to depth, and we see how Oracle did it technique from navigating down the execution plan. They did a full scan of the primary key index on departments to get the primary keys in department number order. Use those to probe a department table to get a list of departments in primary key department number order. Then it did a full table scan of the EMP table, sorted the results into department or number order, and joined, merged the two result sets together to produce the combined result set that we end up with here. Very simple, perfectly straightforward. Now, that was with the statement written like that. An equivalent SQL will be set, select star from emp natural join depth. Now, just using ISO syntax rather than Oracle's proprietary syntax. And we get exactly the same result set. It's an equivalent SQL. And you can see that the execution plan is basically is identical. Look at the plan hash value, 844-388907. And up here, 844-388907. So the most basic example I could think of of two equivalent SQLs, you know, that is identical to that. And the optimizer got it right. We optimized that correctly. It produced the same execution plan, optimized for whatever the statistics on those tables happen to be. Now. Pardon, John. We have a question in the queue. OK. Your uh, execution plan, both that you're showing us now, include the word storage. 
on line five. Ah. You know, question is, Sorry, what is <laughs> Sorry, folks. Uh, that's not exactly relevant. Um, that's to do with uh, Exadata. Uh, what that's telling me, the keyword storage there, shows that operation five, if we were, could be offloaded in an Exadata database machine environment, we could offload the full table scan of AMP to the storage tier. Uh, this is critical for tuning for Exadata, whereas note that the other operations, such as the index full scan and that index lookup, cannot be offloaded to the storage tier. We've got a bit of time, yeah. Um, if one were, for example, to tune the statement a little bit, if I were to force a, no, better way than that, if I were to alter index pk, that make that index invisible, um, the index is still there, of course, for enforcing primary keys. If I now run the statements, Now we get a hash join, and look here, I'm offloading not only the access to the empty table, but also the access to the depth table is now offloadable to my Exadata storage tier. This is just a very brief example of how tuning for Exadata is actually a bit harder than you might think. And we found that there's often a large amount of work needed to optimize your SQL to exploit it. Running your code like this, You've just spent a million dollars on Exadata, and you're only using it for half your query. But sorry about that, Dave, or whoever asked the question. I shouldn't have mentioned that. Now, so forget storage for the rest of this session. So that was my first very basic example of equivalence equals.